Getting started with the material graph does not need to be an intimidating experience. Obviously, as with many things in life, you can go down the rabbit hole of just about anything and the graph is no exception. But to get started and immediately see the benefits, you just need to remember three things. How to stack bump maps, how to apply and control roughness textures, and understanding how to make the most of the preview color hotkey. If you're new to the material graph and you're looking for a point to build from, then these three aspects of the graph are a great starting point. Essentially, the three main things to remember here are color preview, bump add, and color to number to drive roughness. So here you have a scene that's pretty much entirely been built just using those, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You can see the roughness changes in the rock down here. You can see the material is, is got several textures going on here. And I'm gonna actually show you how to do that. But first let's take a look at the material graph and see what's going on inside of it. So the way things are set up currently, I have my metal texture that's attached to an input and I'm using a color to number node to drive the roughness. That's how I've, I've uh, kind of come up with how this texture is going to create a rough versus shiny effect on its surface. And then down here, I have that same texture map driving the bump. And you can actually, instead of doing it that way, you can take the output from the existing metal texture, which has already been set up the way you want it, and you can plug that into the bump as well. And then it'll affect it at the exact same scale and settings as your color to number for your roughness. So the three things, color preview, bump add, color to number. If you look at the top of your, your, your ribbon here at the, in the material graph workspace, this is where you're gonna find your, your different tools to use and as well as your preview color. Uh, a lot faster way to go about using preview color is to actually just hit the hotkey C. And this really speeds up your workflow because you don't have to wait for images to res up. Let me, let me give you an example here. So if I'm looking at what the scale of this texture is and I hit C, you can kind of see what that texture is looking like. And it's isolated that over the actual material. So it makes it really easy for me to change my scale and see how that actually affects my surface. And then when I'm done, I just hit C and then it'll go back to my original material. Now I use that one a lot when it comes to color to number, when it comes to scaling, when it comes to bumps, because it just lets me kind of get a better idea of, of how my node is going to be affecting the parent material. And then if we go over here, color to number, and let me actually show you this real quick. So if I got rid of my color to number node entirely, let me just move that guy out of the way. And I had this guy attached to my color. You can right click, go into your, your utility nodes and pick your color to number from here, or you can actually right click on that connection point that you wanna add your color to number two, hit utilities, and then that's where you could add your color to number as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And then now we have our color to number, and color to number is going to drive our roughness values. Uh, uh, let me double check that. So that's actually driving our color at the moment. So I wanna get that to, to drive our roughness. So I can go plus and I'll select the roughness and now it's connected to my roughness input. And you can actually see on the model, since this is scaled up and it's a fresh uh, color to number, that there's a pretty drastic difference between uh, my, my scratches and non-scratch surface. Now there's this, this kind of rough to shiny texture going on here. Maybe res up for a second so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And then, Basically, uh, again, with color to number, rough, it's going to affect your roughness in this case, and zero is going to be black while white is one. So if you look over here in our uh, properties, anything that has a zero, so your input from, that's going to be a black, this is going to be a black, this is going to represent a white, and this is going to represent a white. So if I, again, hit my color preview, I can take a peek at how that color preview is affecting uh, uh, my texture that I've applied. And then I can actually go ahead and start adjusting how much I want it to, to actually affect my parent node. So as you can see, the output from, which is zero, is affecting my dark colors. And then my output to is affecting my light colors. So you can create a more homogeneous kind of material. And so in, in, in this instance, if I were to hit C, you can see that a lot of that roughness has kind of 
the change in roughness has kind of dissipated. It's, it's a lot more homogeneous at that point. Um, and then smooth basically adds an S curve to your, your, your texture as well. So yeah, that's, that's a, a, a really, really convenient way to add a bunch of different uh, textures and roughness and, and add different elements. And the other thing I was gonna talk about is bumps. So this does a great job for creating that kind of scratch to rough surface. If you have materials where uh, like maybe, maybe like a, a marble countertop or like a tavertine marble where there are some areas that are shinier than others, that's a great way to go about doing that. But what if I wanna add multiple bumps to create like a, a really kind of more in-depth sur surface. So again, you can right click on the workspace, you can hit your utilities and choose your bump add node from here, or you can get your nodes from here, utilities, bump add node. But again, for the sake of convenience and speed, I like to right click on the connection point, utilities, and then bump add right there. And so basically what's happening here is you have a node now, let me see if I can, Get a better view. So you have a node now that is allowing you to plug in a secondary bump input. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up. Let's use let's use a noise texture. So if I plug that texture into my my bump again, let's hit C, and you can see the scale. I'm going to dial that scale back a bit, and I'm going to increase my bump height just so it's kind of more apparent. And then now you can kind of see how that bump, I'm gonna even dial it back a little bit more. But you can see how that bump's affecting the surface and you can see the original uh, metal texture that was applied as well. Excuse me. So inside the bump mat node, if you double click that, you have your ratio, you have your weight one and your weight two. And essentially, you know, the ratio speaks for itself. It's, it's the ratio between the two of them. And then weight one is going to control how much the first bump is going to affect your surface and weight two is the same for the second bump. So if I were to adjust these, I can you know, pull one texture out farther than the other one or make the other one sit back farther than the one that I want to kind of stand out. So that one's really nice to use. You can create really interesting surfaces. You just gotta kind of imagine what your surface might look like. And the really cool part about this node is you can kind of stack them infinitely. So Although there's only two inputs here, I can right click another one of these lines and I can add a bump add node and then I can plug in another texture. Let's just throw a mesh on there and then I can throw another one on there as well. And I can just keep stacking these as much as I want to create the kind of surface I like. So just using these different elements, the roughness, uh, controlling roughness with color to number, uh, your bump add and then getting comfortable using the hotkey for the color preview, you're gonna be able to immediately jump up the level of your, your renders and create significantly more realistic uh, uh, products at the end. Oh, and, and something I didn't mention as well, uh, if you go into your color to number, you can actually invert how the roughness affects your surface. So if I were to apply this and maybe my, my surface was supposed to be a, a gloss, but it ended up being kind of rough and the scratches were glossy. Uh, that could work if it's kind of scratching through like a soft touch material, but usually scratches are kind of rougher than the surface it was on. So I would just invert this to one and that to zero. And then you would essentially have your, your inverted material. Um, uh, I adjusted these down here. So you would do it down here instead. But yeah, that, that's essentially how you go about doing that.